Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are coming at you guys with some exciting news for the Miami Hurricanes fans as they land a commitment from Tyler Harrell, formerly at Alabama for the 2022 season, and before that at Louisville for a couple of years. Now, before we get into this video, I just want to thank everyone again for all the support that they've shown to the channel. Over 5,000 subscribers, that that truly does mean so much to us, and, and we enjoy doing this so much, and the fact that People want to support and want to watch and listen and comment and all that mean, means, again, it means so much to me and my brother and, and we love doing this. So thank you again for the support and and let's get into this video a little bit. And we're first, we're going to talk a little bit about the player and the fit at Miami and then go a little bit more into the big picture at Miami and what they maybe need to do to bounce back from, from obviously a tough season in 2022. But uh, again, still super excited about what Mario Cristobal is doing and, and what he could be for this Miami football program. Uh, to start off with Tyler Harrell, the first thing you think about when you think of him is, is speed. And he really, really flies. I think reportedly he's running a 418 in, in the 40, which, I mean, that's incredible. Uh, an incredible, incredible time for sure. And you even look at that Louisville year, averaging 29 yards of reception and I know it's not a ton of receptions only 18 on the year but still that just means every time he's touching the ball there's a chance for something really special to happen and that frankly is something Miami missed a lot last year you just didn't get nearly enough production out of the wide receiver group no receivers over 500 yards which again if you're going to be a prolific offense in today's college football you need to be able to throw the ball you need to be able to put up big explosive plays and in Miami, frankly, just didn't do that. Obviously a little bit of that was, was health. Some of the wideouts went down. Xavier Estrepo is the first to come to mind. I mean, he's a really, really good player and obviously battled injuries a lot for the whole year, but with Tyler Harrell, I think you're, you're adding a guy who can be an immediate big time explosive presence who can just open this offense up in what Shannon Dawson is going to want to do. And that obviously is going to be put the ball in the air. Last year with Houston, Shannon Dawson had Clayton Toon throwing over 4,000 yards, had almost 500 uh, passing attempts on the season. So that's his MO. He's going to want to bring in that exciting air raid offense. And, and to do that, he's going to need players like Tyler Harrell to just open it up. And you watch Miami last year, it just felt, it just felt like they were playing in a phone booth almost in, in their quarterbacks were under a ton of pressure constantly. It seemed like they were always on their back foot against defenses where they weren't attacking. They were, they were kind of felt like an onslaught was coming after that offense. And clearly Mario Cristobal kind of felt like they needed a big time change. Obviously got rid of Josh Gaddis. And frankly, I'm a little surprised Josh Gaddis made it that whole season. I mean, the offense just wasn't nearly good enough considering what they had and, Tyler Van Dyke, to me, I still think is a super talented player and should be a really good quarterback and, and should, frankly, have a shot at being a relatively high draft pick. And, and he, for him, it's going to need to be a monster bounce back year, too. I mean, every everyone on this Miami team on the offensive side. And, and, and I think they got the players to do it. It's I don't think the, the personnel was nearly as bad as the numbers were last year. I just... For whatever reason, things didn't work out. And now Shannon Dawson going to come in, new, fresh start. And to me, what makes Tyler Harrell so important is, is he's the first wide receiver they landed in the portal. And that that felt like a position they were going to go after hard. Now, I, I do wonder if they're still going to be targeting a guy like Xavier Henderson out of Florida, who, again, a, a big-time player. He just obviously wanted a new, new change of scenery and, and is looking elsewhere. That feels like a guy they should have a shot at. Keon Coleman, no doubt they're they're going to make a run at him if they can. And there's a lot of talent in the portal in, in, in remaining. And to add Tyler Harrell's huge, just because, again, I think they needed to retool that, uh, that room and, and have some guys who, <laughs> again, are going to be more productive and, and difference makers. And that's certainly what you're getting in Tyler Harrell. Now, there is like the case we made. You, you clearly don't know for sure. It's – the Alabama year clearly didn't work out for, for Harrell at, at all. And to, to accuse, put that all on him, it, it's hard. I mean, there were a lot of things that, given what Alabama had talent-wise, that offense really didn't kind of move and operate the way you would have thought. And given that Bryce Young was was the guy he is, it, it, 
<laughs> it kind of I think it surprised me for sure that they weren't a little bit more explosive and and couldn't use guys like Tyler Harrell and, and some of the wideouts they had. And I and I think honestly for Nick Saban, I, I think him and Bill O'Brien, it was probably time for for a bit of a change of scenery too. And and obviously O'Brien's back in New England. And all that's to say, I'm I'm just not sure that Tyler Harrell. It just I I don't know. It, things don't didn't work out. It, it is what it is, and the people are going to criticize him for it. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you you can see there's a lot of talent there. Just look at what he did at Louisville. And again, just looking at what this Canes team needed, they needed somebody like him. Because at the end of the day, I I think what Miami's going to need to do is try to kind of get that juice back in the program that they had when when Mario Cristobal first came in, and he came in really hot really effective on the recruiting trail clearly that that 2022 class was really really good and frankly i I, or 2023 i should say and and frankly i think you don't worry about mario cristobal as a recruiter he's gonna do a really really good job at miami and and i think as long as he's there they're gonna get a lot of talent in the doors but i do think you look at that wide out recruiting position that that's maybe not quite up to the the rest of the team. And, and I think part of that is you look at what they had last year. That's just not attractive football for, for top end wide receivers. And there's a lot of really good players, especially at the wideout spot coming out of Florida in Miami is going to need to fight to keep those guys home. Like you, you think of a guy like Jeremiah Smith, that's a, a Florida guy for them. They're probably going to need to show a, a guy like him something this year in terms of, being able to be a little more explosive, put up more points, get wide receivers to kind of hit that thousand yard mark, which to me is what kind of starts cracking those wide routes to to feel like they're in that elite status. And obviously they weren't even close to that last year. But I again they have the quarterback to do it. They just need to put it together on the field and, and make sure their offense just cooks like honestly like Houston did with Shannon Dawson. I mean, they were really, really good. Tank Dell, an incredible wide receiver. I I felt like could have possibly been a late first round, early second round guy. Put up monster, monster numbers at <laughs> at Houston. And, and, and that's what Shannon Dawson is going to need to bring to this Miami team. I again I think he's got the talent. I think Tyler Harrell does a lot to kind of amp that up and, and create some space for everybody else on that football team. In, in, in ultimately on the path to being an, an explosive enough offense to tempt a guy like Jeremiah Smith to stay home, go to Miami, and then as Miami really starts to get humming, go out there and be able to recruit any wide receiver they want in the country, which, again, I'm just not sure they're there yet given kind of the uncertainty around what they can be as an offensive football team. But this year can do a lot to dispel those, those sort of myths or, or – I, whatever, like stigma, if you will. And, and I think that's going to be really important for Shannon Dawson as he kicks off his tenure and in, 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 in tries to lead Mario Cristobal or be on the train for Mario Cristobal to bring this Miami football program back to what I think all the fans expect it to be and what maybe you could argue it should be. But uh, that's about it for me. Again, I'm, I'm excited for this Miami football team with this type of get. I do – I do suspect they're going to make a run at a, another wideout or two uh, in the remaining part of the portal. And, and given what's in there, I think they do have some some good options if they can do it. But uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll talk to you later.